Since retiring, I've been enjoying interesting walks, always looking out for new routes. And living in Cumbria, I'm spoilt for choice. Well, I found a little hidden gem. Did you know Cumbria has its own pilgrim's path used by the monks over 800 years ago and it's called the Cistercian Way. So come with me, let's follow this path on a 25 mile walk over three days from Grange over Sands, over Hemp's Fell, down through Cartmill Priory, Urswick, Dalton Castle, Furness Abbey and on to Peel Castle. According to my map, this Cistercian Way can start here at Grain Station. So, aiming my map north, we should be going that way. That's, that's this road here, which is Windermere Road. Right, let's get walking. So, dig out your map and you can follow this trail through some of the most picturesque landscapes and villages in the South Lakes, with a little history along the way. Oh, here we are, the first public footpath signpost. This footpath should take us up through Eggerslack Woods and on to Hemp's Fell. Look at this! The Hempsfell Hospice was built in 1846 by the Vicar of Cartmel as a shelter for all walkers. It takes about half an hour to 45 minutes of hard walking to get up here, but it's well worth it. Follow the path down heading south a third of a mile, then take the path bearing right, that's west, to Cartmel. Well, it's certainly warming up now. I think I have my hat on. Right, so, not far now, and we'll be in Cartmel. Ah, well, it actually mentions it here, Cistercian Way. According to my Ordnance Survey map, it's a quick right turn, then a few hundred yards down Priest Lane. Through the gate, and our pilgrim's path takes us around the Priory, right to the front door. And I'll bet our pilgrims used to call in, so, I think I will.
Carrying on, our route takes us straight through Cartmill village, through various shops and over the river Ear, past some really good pubs and the old village square, over the race course to a signpost with a map. This Cistercian Way path splits here. If you take the right, that takes you past Waltham Hall, Mount Barton and down into Cark. Or there's the more direct route to your left, which, which drops you straight into Cark. And uh, the way the time's going, that's the way I'm going. Passing through Cark Village and crossing the River Ear again, bear right along the fold, first left onto Caton Lane, over the railway footbridge and on to the Sandgate shoreline. I'm stood on Lenny Brick Point, and that is the Leven Estuary. And two to three miles across from here lies the sanctuaries of Chapel Island and Conis Head Priory. So the monks would cross from here. And these sands are really dangerous. An official guide must always be used. So, I think I'll take the train. <laughs> Well, after crossing the estuary and resting on Chapel Island, the monks came ashore here on Priory Point. So now we're on the Furness Peninsula. And at the top of this beach is a gate to a path that leads to Conis Head Priory, originally built by the Augustinians as a hospital. Now, I've got a choice of direction again. I can head north through Ulverston, Swarthmoor and down into Urswick, or there's the more direct route south through Bardsey, Berkeley and over into Urswick. But my hotel is in Bardsey, so let's see. That's lucky, south to Bardsey. My hotel turns out to be a B&B, &B. well that's even better. It's been a really long day today, but a really good one. And I bet there's a pint in there with my name on it.
The start of day two brings us up onto Birkrig Common and this is the Stone Circle, also known as the Druid Circle or even the Druid's Temple. It's Bronze Age dating to between 17 and 14 BC. We've dropped right down now off Berkeley Common and now we're in Great Erswick. And according to my map, our Cistercian Way runs straight through here, right to the back of St Mary's and St Michael's Church. St Mary's and St Michael's Church is the oldest church in Furness. From evidence found, a church is believed to have been here since the 10th century. Our path is taking us through Little Erswick and seems to run into a modern cul-de-sac of houses. Although access through is very good. The following two mile walk to Dalton in Furness 
is a public footpath shown on your Ordnance Survey map, taking you past Woodhead, but be aware of livestock. Over fields and meadows, passing Standing Tarn, leading to the ancient market town of Dalton. Heading west down Ulverston Road, passing Tudor Square, then along Market Street, with its fine shops, pubs and cafes, and on to Market Place. And this is where you'll find Dalton Castle. It's a 14th century tower constructed by the monks of Furness Abbey and stood above the town to defend the people of Dalton and the approaches to Furness Abbey, our next port of call. Carrying on down Church Street keeping Poker Beck on your left hand side. Eventually you'll come to two footbridges Take the left hand wooden footbridge over Poker Beck and up to Abbey Road. Furness Abbey is on the outskirts of Barrow in Furness, a Victorian town with a wide tree lined avenue leading to the town centre. With modern shops, retail parks and easy access to various beaches, wildlife walks, cycleways, fishing and boating. Follow the path down through the veil of the deadly nightshade. Through the railway tunnel and out and along Abbey Approach. So, if you're on a pilgrimage, well, you've arrived. Furness Abbey dates back to 1123 and for hundreds of years kept a wealthy, powerful and well-ordered community. Furness Abbey, the second richest monastery in England. And tomorrow, our last day, is taking us to Peel Island, the end of our journey.
The start of day three brings us round to Bow Bridge. It's medieval, but to me, it still looks in really good condition. Continuing on along the Cistercian Way, cross Bow Bridge to the gate and turn left. Walk 200 yards up Park House Road to the first signpost. Through the Kissing Gate, Being aware of livestock, head straight for the top of the hill. At the signpost, head south and get walking. Carry on descending through the hamlet of Stank. At the last farmhouse, bear left through the gate and be aware of more livestock. And follow the footpath. over stiles and through the stoops to the picturesque village of Lees. It's absolutely beautiful here today in Lise. It's like an oasis. Carry on along Kilm Lane and turn right to Moss House. After Moss House, go through the gate and head for the footbridge to cross Sarah Beck. After shutting all gates, head for Pease Home Lane and on to St. Michael's Church. Hmm, that's disappointing. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not open at the moment.
St Michael's also holds a lot of history, but it seems a very isolated church. It's in the parish of Rampside, and Rampside is about a mile from here. And that happens to be our next village en route. Carry on along the public footpath, heading west. Keep to the public footpath, now heading south, to the coastal village of Rampside. We've reached the Rampside shoreline, where our Cistercian Way path splits again, and that's leaving me with a choice of direction. So, I can head north of the old line, skirting past Barrow and crossing over onto Walney Island, then walk four miles south to Sheep Island, then cross from Sheep Island to Peel Island at low tide. Or, there's the more direct route south, a half a mile, down this causeway to Row Island and catch the ferry. So, where's my lucky coin? Right, okay. Let's see. Ah, south to Row Island and the ferry. Row Island is the southernmost tip of the Furness Peninsula, with a population of approximately 100, and at one time was home to a hairy biker. With a boating club, a popular cafe, and a lifeboat station. Here it is, Peel Island. And we're just in time for the ferry. Peel Island lies half a mile across the channel and is approximately 50 acres in size, with a castle, a pub, a king, cottages and camping. The monks of Furness Abbey built Peel Castle in the early 14th century to guard the entrance to Walney Channel. With its high stone walls, moats and men-at-arms, it was also used as a fortified warehouse to keep its cargo of wine, wool and grain safe from the pirates and raiders. Oh, 
Well, that just about wraps it up from me. So, if you're looking for a 25 mile pilgrimage over three days, walking in the footsteps of the Cistercian monks, well, this is the one. Right, all I need to do now is work out where I'm going next.